Hello everyone, welcome to GitLab Continuous Integration and Continuous Deployment Tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial we are going to cover some important topics. Uh, I chose the one, the, the topics I think are the most important for understanding and also for doing some integration and deployment using GitLab. Uh, this is the agenda we have uh, and this is uh, each point of this agenda is is mapped to one video we are going to cover. We will start with some high level, high level architecture. Um, it is related with GitLab and how, how we are going to implement because there are many ways. I will show you the ones I, I, I prefer. After that, uh, we are going to talk about Docker. Uh, it is kind of in high level architecture. I will explain like each of the of the modules we are going to to talk about and after that i will talk uh, module my mo model by my model for example in the architecture we are going to cover docker runner registry and after that uh, we are going to do some deployment but that's the way we are going to work and during this tutorial uh, as i said uh, we are going to explain and talk about docker uh, just like a uh, fast explanation to understand. Uh, after that, we are going to talk about GitLab Runner. It's really important because it is the way that we have to talk with Docker, uh, from GitLab to Docker. After that, we are going to talk about the GitLab registry. It is kind of, it is really similar to the Docker Hub. It is a place in, uh, and we can use that place to store our image uh, after that, we are going to create a demo applications. I will show some. I, I will show. I will choose. Sorry, an application um, as easy as possible because the main idea of this tutorial is to understand how all these things work together. And I'm not going to talk about how uh, to code in any specific language. For that reason, I will choose an easy application for for you to understand as as good as possible the concepts. After that, we are doing some integration and deployment using plain SSH. I, I named this plain SSH because in this case, we are not using any kind of runner or Docker implementation. It is not Dockerized approach because uh, as we are going to cover in other videos uh, when we are going plain SSH. It is just like we are going to install the SSH from command line into the Docker. And after that, we are going to connect to one server and execute the commands. Step number seven and number eight are the real one we, we will need and we will like to learn the most in this tutorial because those videos are related with uh, the shell executor and the Docker executor. Uh, when we are using GitLab, we can install a GitLab runner and we, we, we have the opportunity to choose uh, which kind of executor we want to use. Uh, okay, but I, I will talk about later. Let's start with a high level architecture when we are into GitLab. It is a, uh, really important because if we don't understand how all these things fit together, uh, we are not going to understand how to deploy, how to integrate. Okay, go ahead. Um, in this image, first we have, first, that all. Uh, the orange ones, I did it because all the orange squares are property of GitLab. And this one, this one we have in here, it is personal. I mean, you have a computer, you have a server, you install the Docker, after that you start the GitLab runner and you start working with that. Um, the arrows we have in here are the relations between each component. For example, in here, we have relation from GitLab to the shared runner and we have relation between the personal runner with GitLab. Uh, it ha it ha it is uh, bidirectional because we can communicate from here to here and from GitLab to the runner. Also from here and this uh, this this line, the one we have in the middle of the screen between GitLab and the registry, it is because it is just in one way, as you can see, because in this case GitLab used the registry just to fetch 
which image do we have because the image are built in here and pushed to here it is not going through GitLab uh, okay after that uh, we have the communication between the personal uh, or the chart runner and the registry uh, but what how, how the flow works in here okay when we open GitLab let's suppose we in this moment we have a runner we have a personal runner with its a specific docker and we have our account we have a project and we have all the stuff we need when we start uh, from here we have our code then we have some specific files I will explain later if you have heard about them it is the Gilblast CI that channel and the docker file when we have a branch or a deployment it came to here or to the chart runner it is the first step that we execute or GitLab execute for us when we start uh, after that when we are in the runner in in the docker in this case because runner is used just to communicate with GitLab it is like a middleware we have in order to mediate between docker and GitLab also in here when we are here in the docker the first uh, uh, the first step uh, that GitLab execute is to clone the, repo the repository in this case using the branch that we are deploying we are testing once we are there uh, we can use docker and the docker file that it is also there with the repository we I, we are going to cover that later it is also there with the repository because we have the project in here then when the pipeline is start it came to here when we are here we have all our files here I, I mean for example we have a Java project we will have here our our classes our files our virtual pictures whatever we have we will be here also in these files we have the gil.ci.jaml and the docker file that we create for this project um, as you know or if you don't know we will cover later um, GitLab CI you can use any docker image that you want it also happening here and when we are here uh, if you have a docker file that docker file will, will be built I mean first when, with the GitLab CI the, the, the data and the project uh, comes to here and you execute all the comments you want after that when you are into that uh, docker for example let's suppose you have a docker file you for using ubuntu and to build uh, the project and create an image when you are in here into the into your ci.jml file you have to build that image uh, as we will cover later uh, the docker file um, when you execute a comment for example docker build and the e on the and it will look for the file in the current directory it is in there if it is in there it will build an image for us using that docker file after that let's suppose that is the build uh, step the build stage and we have a deploy the stage in the deploy in the deploy the stage we will take take that image that we already built and we will push that image to here to the registry now we have a completely functional image stored in our private registry let's suppose another person want to use that image he, he will just need to use docker and run that image from anywhere around the world and he will have a completely functional code he doesn't need to install anything anything just start coding and this is the way that all things all these things work uh, in the next videos i will cover why we are using char runner why we are using personal runner but see you in the next video thanks